outperformed the middle one last week. I thought I'd perform the last one now, and then maybe next week you get the first one. If you like. <laughs> Alright, so it's, uh, it's called Cut the Chord. I wonder, of course, who cut the chord, changed out the double bass and the harpsichord. Oh dear lord, what a sight am I, the dark rings under my eyes. Why am I so surprised? It's only ever half five when I'm able to close my eyes. But there's my right, the blue light, making my red eyes go blind. And you know what, I don't even mind, because that way it means I won't be able to see the time, nor will it mean that I'll have to close the blinds when the sun is only halfway up the sky. Maybe I'll still hear the magpies when they come to say hi, be that old familiar guy, convince myself that anywhere on earth could be the countryside. So why, why would I cry at loss of sight, the fore and the hind is already lost to my time, forget stuck in the clocks of my mind, can't tell if I'm coming or going, whether the sun is out or if it's snowing. Whoever claims to be forever knowing better starts to get going, I'll probably follow suit, like solitaires of the blues and twos and hot pursuit. Well, my friend, here's to you. That's uh, simple. It's about Christmas to them, but you know, pumping London to Eddie Main Line, throwbacks to 15 mills, tell the same lies to inspectors, injectors. With laughter so infectious, so oh, how the morphine protects us, late night house fight accepts us. Uni flats in the time before the election. Conversations that set us apart from the music and the lights in the dark Just like ketamine, K.O. in the park Sniffing snow white shards, getting so sharp Cause we swallow our pride and let the crystals rest inside Allow the effects to take over our mind As we roam over cobblestones Back to the flat that we call our home for the night Let's just hang on Lay in the road of passing cars We look up at the stars at night And know for a moment everything might be alright Never coat rests by my side, perfect for the evening of late July. Door opens, we make our way inside. Fling to the side of the wall, hang on, make our way inside. Hope and effect to the sides, we fling to the side of the wall. Look over a barrier for the sight of the fall. Law force tool with high feelings, a slight feeling, senses the inner sensation of endless flight, so I might just hang from the side. Just like how I did in the flats back at home Searching for a feeling never shown Searching for a purpose never known 20 years grown and still doing the same shit Drugs that gave my youth a facelift Do Going into the living room do the bed up makeshift Stack up the sofa pillows just beneath the windows Lay on top These nights didn't say a lot But nor did they need to Reactions that they spoke through The silent stoners and the joke cues Nights of swollen cans and stuff Stolen cans and swollen hands to a morning of in the moment plans Bus rides and boots fares, knock off knock knocks and who's theirs Who cares, catches the roof snares and two pairs and three pieces Uncles and nieces, blows up to leave it, there's still a chance to retrieve it Thank you, that's an <laughs> So the footage in the background is a coach journey from Leeds to London I've sort of added it in so I can sort of talk about the journey of poetry in between the word I've done. I was going to use it for a music video for my friend Brad's, or Brad Thomas. He um he makes music, he's a singer and a guitarist, and he makes instrumentals. We worked together in the past. Over my time at being at uni, he's a friend of my house, made Joseph Cook, who I've also worked with to make music, where I'll write lyrics or I'll perform over his guitar. This is something that I did for Brad, and he... He asked me to write lyrics for him. We were sitting in Joe's room and I, I wrote some lyrics and I gave it to him. And he was working on a guitar piece and he found a melody and all that. And he just used my words. So I wanted to use a footage for him because it's about going home. And I was on my way home when I filmed the coach show to do something with it. Well, it's also fitting because it's to do with my sort of sense of poetry, the journey. I talk about a night out and talk about everything that's going on. It's in part inspired by Jack Carrack and his style of writing in Lonesome Traveller and Darn, My Bums and On The Road, a few books that I've read whilst being at uni. They sort of inspire my work, not too much, but they've shown an understanding of similarity that I can sort of hold on to. So sort of know that the work that I do is accepted in poetry as well is sort of started off with me rapping and that's why I like to work with music still I suppose people are about doing instrumentals for me and I've got a lot of stuff coming my way 
over the next few weeks. Over the summer, I'm releasing an EP with a friend that I made. He, he's a singer, but he used, like, hip-hop instrumentals and lay-back ones to create a sort of storytelling album, even. Where I'm going to use some of my art to do the cover photo. So that sort of took a back burner. I came to uni with the idea where I'd study illustration and do loads of sketching and stuff, but I sort of found my practice more in spoken word, which is fine because I was doing it on the side anyway, but I never wanted to be like my main thing. That was something I was just really passionate about. And I thought that art would be the main chore where I would study illustration, go into design or graphic design and use that as my sort of mainstream work and use my words on the side and enjoy it as sort of something personal, something private. But by sharing that with others, it creates this sort of understanding with others that I would look in for in music that I listened to when I was growing up. For example, Gangstar. It's a hip-hop duo from the 90s. One guy, Guru, was a wordsmith and a rapper and Premier, he was a producer. And they would tell stories. When I was younger, I would get fascinated by them. I just love stories from being in pubs, hearing people talk about their past experiences. And there's always a sense that whatever goes wrong, you'll get through it and have good stories to tell. I sort of think that's what my work's inspired by. There's conversations, community conversations, the people you grow up around, coming of age things, I think. I'm inspired by films as well, such as Good Will Hunting, and ones that just sort of tell a story. When something happens to someone, it changes them, it makes them better, or it makes them an adult. Over lockdown, my mum gave me this book called Iron John, and I didn't really read it for a while. It's all that's the uni, and I read it then. I was going for a tough time. And the stories in that, the fables in that, because analysing the Grimm Brothers stories and... It made it make sense, more so now that I've had space from home, I've matured. Or so people have said to me when I've gone back. I feel as I should talk a bit more about Bone Down before I carry on with the rest of the work that I have in this. Bone Down is um, a place I met other poets and speak to them about. This poetry I didn't really find out until really recently. And there's so many different types. There's this person called Akil, who performs with passion and really uses freedom of speech as advantage, I think. Where you say some things that are quite on the knuckle, quite off key, but you'll save the poem halfway through it and bring it back round to just say exactly what he means. This is other guy called Keith Fenton, who is from London, South East London, near Catford. And we have a similar sense of humour. And he can tell the story really well. Even when we're just in a pub, he, he can just really tell the story. He's older than I am, about 59. And he can just tell the story because he's told so many. And his poetry is like our John Cooper Clark. A poet recommended to me by Joe Cook. My housemate. Um, someone I've worked with to do poetry for as well where it's sort of um, society-based, where I sort of look at what's going on in the world and write about that, because we have the same feelings towards things in our community of Leeds and see how classes sort of clash at university. I feel like with my journey at university, it's not one that's just straightforward you at uni. I feel like it's one where it's, I've had to struggle with not having much money here, and trying to find work, where I went from working in London a lot and like having a steady income to come out to Leeds and have to start from scratch again. It feels like I've gone back in time to being a teenager. And I feel like it's helpful to write because you can say that and pass it on to others who will understand. I released an album recently called Grapevines and that was reviewed by Bone Down. And in their review of it, they say that I capture youthfulness and the inner workings of your mind and 
common themes. They don't seem too common when you're dealing with them yourself. You feel like you're the only one in your boat. We don't realize you have a whole crew of people that feel exactly the same way. I think that's the special thing about poetry and it helps me write. For example, there's a poem I wrote called Simple, which I performed at my first open mic gig in Leeds a couple of years ago now. And in the crowd, there's someone that doesn't listen to poetry. And he resonated with a poem that I read called well, Simple. And it's about nostalgia and being a, know, an adult and wanting to go back to being a kid and reminiscing. Not really wanting to go back, just reminiscing on it. And having a thought of what you would change if you go back. That's contrasted with another poem I wrote called Edinburgh, which is about a trip to Edinburgh that I took with my mates. I'll just tell the story. I think all my work is just about storytelling. So I feel like for the footage in the background to be just an open road. It just sort of shows the journey to it all. Five quid doesn't go a long way, but neither does a hundred. I'll set the garden steps, free to the birds, whoever hears it. Leaves in the trees. I'm always talking about the blowing wind, and whoever can hear my words in the breeze. Anyway, I'm just talking to the trees that stay beneath. A summit. Winter's coming. So I'm starting to sleep next to the heath, or if they're working. Mum's at work, and well, she's working. Windows don't close in the winter months and the uh, social housing need to come to fix it. But good luck with that. Five quid doesn't go a long way but neither does a hundred. So you don't mind me if I say I want to pick my feet up for a little bit. To find a place to chill. A place in the hills. Where just keep rolling on. Go beyond. Where the city lights might end. The city sights, my friend. Can't smoke the herb, but it ain't much of a trend. I wanna get away from the tracksuits and the Reeboks, the tight socks, the Donny socks. I'll be direct, I'm in that you know, sports direct, trying to find cheaper packs, the bumper packs, and bumping off the bumping trains, the bumpy tracks, bumpy roads, and back again down country lanes where I wanna explain my way away, explain my brain away. Hundred thoughts, so I try to write them down. I like the sound of my own voice sometimes, except when it's on my own mind. I don't mind when it's on the mic. But there you go. Just how I vibe, how I try to figure out what I mean, try to figure out how I see things. Best believe things, neat things. I like my neat things and organisation, though it gets frustrating because I can't actually get what I need or get what I want because I'm very unorganised, yes, my son. My room's a mess, paintings on the wall, sketches in the diary, in the journal All over the floorboards with my shoes and my socks battered and scattered by the door A hundred thoughts And a hundred more to come So there you go Just let it run Chase on till I see the setting sun I go to the landscapes or just to watch the sun set I don't know mate I don't think I'm done yet Run checks and I check that again. Send a text just to check in with friends. Call a mate to see how he's getting on. Try and plan a trip abroad, but I don't think we can afford it just yet. Enough stress as it is. Rent's gone up and uh, we're ain't too bliss. And then again, it is where it is because ain't everyone in the same spot. Working shitty day jobs. Nine to five, yeah, it's alright, it's a vibe because everyone's all doing the same thing in life, but why? Like, why? Why on earth do I want to be smoking herbs of the earth? I should be peaceful without it. Don't doubt it. Silence is perfect. But I have to shout it. the 
the bedroom light Trains pass us by The warmth of the night Smiles beneath the glow of the candlelight Sketching as I write with a lamp by my sight Thought you could take its place Being at work all day in the same direction as a train Now I've just seen passing through the station Patience is a virtue The 8pm curfew The lessons I learnt you The accidents that hurt you Perfection of solitude, perfection of independence, and life's moments of unfinished sentence. Shoes in the shoe rack, the clothes piled on top, some are really worn, paintings on the walls, some are really torn. The night's still strong, there's still a few hours until it's dawn. It's the norm, nothing special, go downstairs to boil the kettle Make a cup of tea, the sounds of ceramics against metal Stress out of a head full, times regret filled and forgetful Mates are out looking for the next pool, I guess that might be the less cool Okay, I guess cool, cigarettes by the garden with the tobacco that they left behind Look at the garden light as I'm trying to find the signs It's okay, I don't mind Often said the reason to my Ryan Take shelter in whatever I can find The seasons and it's time Go back upstairs just to write and fill the track Turn the light off and let the room fade to black In my dreams to half asleep Though it still feels all that deep The place where old memories like to creep Walking down Solon streets Manchester by the sea Past the car when a man played his saxophone. I checked for my phone, found some texts and some missed calls. I missed all. Don't really regret it at all, nah, mate. I'm just vibing. No need to play the fool. No need to talk about it. Can just ride on through. In a silent mood. The beat poetry beats with the blood. I just like to do what I do. Read a book or two as I sit on the tube. Listen to the conversations, I've heard a few funny ones Sorrow filled, I don't know mate, it's just how everyone gets on And off again, the station's changed, I'll try to change the pace Changing faces, changing outfits, changing places, changing accents Accentuate, the tones and all Again I miss some phone calls I'll just keep walking on Doing my own thing Walk through the streets And some mates still try to give me a ring I answered a couple and just said Look mate, I'm just trying to do my thing I might link you later See some tags up on the escalator I've seen these things before I don't know them at all I just like the handwriting I guess that's all Anyway, come out the station, patience, and give my mates a call, see what they're saying. Jump back on the train again, and I'll ride on to the nearest station. I walked around the gallery, I admired the paintings I've already seen a hundred times before. Maybe more, maybe less, I looked at the colours used to express emotion, green emulsion and cream oils and canvas. You can assume that it's a room for the anxious, a foe of their time, a foe of their mind. My friend Harvey last night said that a camera was his eye, or rather his eye was a camera. When he closed one and kept the other open, he is hoping that if I go blind and one, the other lens isn't broken, outspoken, well spoken, words must be well chosen. If I want to see you off to sleep when you're dozing, I'm keen to keep the dosage of the stories picked from the pages chosen. Are you not amused? Am I not to presume the emotions that you've chosen? See, I'm too, I'm an artist. My frame's just been broken and the canvas cast aside and the casket cast aside. You see, I'm not grim sure to cast the darkness of my mind. I somewhat tries to see where the sunlight tries to shine in between the ink with which I write. I was thinking about something else when I said that. Someone's gonna re watch that film, if you say that. Yeah, I know. Hey, you cannot. Look how strange this is. Look what I just. What did you get me? What kind of Becky did you get me? Marlboro. How much was it? Uh, £12.99. Look at the similarity. I'm so jealous of your. Is that me? Yeah, it's meant to be you. It's sort of rough sketch, really. Did you do rough. That? Yeah, That's thing. really good compared to your normal drawings of me. 
That's really shit, I didn't see seconds. I think that's a lot better than the other drawings that you've done to me. Where I look terrible. I've included these videos to sort of show the making process of the videos I was also making for the poetry. There'd be films of friends of mine on nights out where we would talk in bars or pubs. And I'd capture it all on camera and sort of tell a story, going back to how I'd tell the stories in Edinburgh. I thought it was another way of capturing it. It seems right, it seems like I'm mixing media when I do it. And it creates something new that I didn't know I'd begin to make, but it makes sense for me to do so. It feels like a rounded product once I add the words to the video. You tell a story, you make a film. And it seems sort of perfect. The last bit of footage that's to follow this is a video that I created is basically a sum of everything I've spoken about about capturing moments and layering poetry over the top in the video I mention an art collective and that's something I did recently I set up with the help of my friends that I've sort of brought together to create a collective for People to have a space to showcase their art for those that aren't in collectives already or don't fall into those categories or those courses. It gives these people a space to do it. And I wanted to make it community based so we weren't really charging any money for the events. So the last one I did, the most recent one, we were working with a band and the band are friends of ours but they charged money for it and it just it's just a whole other aspect of creativity and the arts world that I had to get to grips with with charging people and making it something other than an idea to make it something that's tangible and just fun and to help the community and to have money for the next event so no one has to pay for the space out of their own pocket, which I found myself doing with the first one charging tickets and entry for the last gig meant that we could get the money back for how much we paid and also pay some of the artists for the time. Even though that wasn't the initial idea, it sort of gains the grips of reality of how everything goes about. And I reference this in in the next video. I say I'll thank some friends for the help with the event and they were a guest appearance sort of thing. So I'll leave you with that last video so you can see how everything came about in the last one. Um, before I go, I want to say about music that's inspired my work. For example, Lou Reed, Bob Marley, another dub artist. They, um, they sort of helped me relax and sort of just go to the flow more and I feel like over the past three years I've really just relaxed a lot and I feel like that comes through in the last video where everything's just nice and conversational and happy and I just talk about the night as it plays out and so I'll leave you with that final piece. Thank you. The last night was an amazing mood. It was the first time in a while I'd eaten any decent food. So I just laid in my room listening to reggae music, sometimes like the tunes. It was in the mood. I was sat and I was writing, I lay back down again. And I was smiling. It's been a while since it was that case, it was the way, anyway. I saw some messages to say, going to the pub in a bit, do you want to come? So. I put some mates and we were down. The person came round and we left. I had a camera on me for context. I just wanted to film the night as it played out, so I did. We got some drinks, we sat around the table. And we spoke. 
we did this quite a lot, but it felt like we hadn't done this for a while, you know. The way he spoke was gentle, it was calming, it was comfortable. We sat there for a while, we were doing the unusual with the usual. We had discounted drinks, because I know the guy was behind the bar. And so we are smiling, mouth so far apart. And we'll go for smokes at times. I'll be left at the table alone. Because I didn't have any tobacco of my own, so when I went out, I rolled off someone else. We, um... We smoked and spoke with our people outside. And I filmed them as well, because a week ago we did an event together and they smashed it. And I was thanking them for that. And I was telling someone else about what the event was about. It's like it's a collective, it's a community, it's a space for friends. And um, I was quite drunk when I said I felt like the pole in the middle of revolving doors. But I guess they shared my thoughts. We laughed and we smiled. My mates came out and they joined in the conversation. We were talking about writing magazines and zines and all sorts in between. Anyway, we went back in. And we said we spoke for a while longer and we left. And we sat at the house and we made some food. The next morning I watched it back, I watched back the video. And um, I was like, I'm never talking again. I'm never talking again. I believe this is 20 minutes. Went to the kitchen and chewed my housemate Sarah off while we made food again. I come back upstairs and I realised I am no longer a man of my word. <laughs>